I'd love to kick off the conversation by asking what a fascinating industry you work in. Do you think things are progressing for women in your industry? Sharice, maybe I could start with you. Sure. Um, so I, I think I think they are. I think the pace is much slower than I would certainly hope. Um, but, uh, you know, I started working um, really in, in the entertainment industry in Hollywood about seven years ago. My first job was on a TV show, and, and I was one of two female writers on the entire staff. And uh, so I, since that time until now, I, I've definitely seen things progress, you know, just within Disney Animation Studios. I've seen them be much more proactive about hiring women and people of color. So I think things are moving along. I just wish it was a little quicker. Absolutely. Jessica, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I agree completely. I mean, it's always a little bit frustrating that it's not happening faster, but um, you know, our movies, and I'm sure the, the same as across the industry, it takes so long to do animation. So that projects that were started in, in 2016 are now starting to come out. Um, for us, at least at Pixar, it's like they're so long in development that, you know, we're finally, start, I think we're going to start to see the receipts of changes that were made years ago um, as those as those people, as those directors and those projects start to uh, actually hit the light of day. So I, I think we're going to see a lot more change coming in the projects that are coming out. But um, I agree. I, you know, there's progress that's happening, but I'm excited for more. I'd be very curious to ask you both, what have been the hurdles and the barriers that you personally have encountered along this journey that you think are becoming less of a hurdle or less of a barrier? Sharice? Sure. I mean, I think, uh, you know, storytelling is a very personal, uh, personal thing. You know, I think um, a lot of audiences and, and even I have had to train myself to kind of uh, check myself and make sure that I am telling story from a viewpoint that feels good to me. You know, almost everybody who's consumed media in the United States has like grown up on this diet of content produced by largely just white men. And so um, I think as people who are storytellers, uh, creating stories for a new world, a more inclusive world, I am constantly having to check myself and say, is this sort of a story that I am just sort of feeling uh, accustomed to telling? Is this a story that uh, I feel is actually telling the, a, a different kind of truth? So I think just internally checking myself and making sure that I'm kind of decolonizing my thinking as a storyteller. The storyteller is always something that's really on my mind. Absolutely. But uh, and in uh, kind of making this journey, Sharice, what were the main barriers when you say you started seven years ago? What has changed for you between, say, seven years and, I don't know, three years ago when you started your involvement in Encanto? What changes have you actually seen? Has it become more open? Has it become more inclusive? Mm. I mean, I think sort of when I started out, I saw studios uh, less willing to take risks on first time female showrunners in a way that I felt like was very different from first time male showrunners, uh, just in the sort of TV side of things. And that has changed. You know, now I'm working on some TV projects uh, where I am the showrunner and I don't, I wonder if that would have happened seven years ago, you know, um, and I think even in terms of my role on this film, you know, I, I started out as a writer on the film and I was promoted to being a co-director. Um, and I really credit Disney Animation because I, I think I didn't even think of myself as a director before this. And it was really their support and encouragement that that kind of showed me that I could and uh, helped me believe in myself. And now it's something that I hope to do again frequently in the future. And I mean, I can't go further without congratulating, congratulating you, Cherise, on the phenomenal success of Encounter. I myself have watched it several times. We have the music on in the car all the time. Are you surprised by its success? And, and are you happy that they talked you into doing the co-directing role? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> I think um, I feel really, uh, I feel like in a very fortunate position because uh, I know all of the work and all of the passion that went into this movie, not just from me and my fellow directors and writer, uh, but from the entire crew. There was 800 people who worked on this movie, from designers mm -hmm. to animators uh, to lighters and uh, riggers and, uh, and all the different departments. And so I know that each department was really bringing their passion and, and their 
personal kind of family influence into it. So in a lot of ways, it feels like it was a very personal film that became very, very global and public <laughs> and, and blew up in this way that, you know, I think none of us were quite anticipating. But it's been amazing seeing the reaction. And I think the best part of the reaction for me is seeing um, children of color recognize themselves in the film and feel represented and feel seen. And, and watching families who uh, haven't seen Latinx families on screen very often or blended families uh, in like, of sort of different racial backgrounds all together on screen uh, and those families feeling heard and, and feeling represented, that's been really the most gratifying part of the reaction to me. Absolutely. And Jessica, I would be really interested to learn a bit more about what you do in your role and also to ask you what changes or barriers you may be faced at the beginning, which you think are less of a barrier today. Yeah, I mean, when I right now I'm uh, managing an art department for one of our features in development. Um, but I think the, the work that I've been doing in um, diversity and inclusion, which was about sort of tracking the characters and the speaking lines um, in our films, which is something I started, uh, you know, 2013, 2014. Um, mm -hmm. That was something that when I started doing it wasn't really being done regularly in, in Pixar and, um, and I, I think generally in, in the industry. Um, and so it's something that I feel like the times have changed quite a bit. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of cultural, obviously cultural movements that have happened since then that have really um, allowed us to take this work and move it into a into a very different space and sort of it became a different conversation about normalizing um, representation and, and sort of trying to really show the world that we're living in in a, in a different way as opposed to, you know, like Sharice was saying, the stories that have were traditionally being told by straight white men and, and now sort of opening up that to an entirely different space of storytellers. Um, and I think that the it, there was definitely some defensiveness when I started doing my work and sort of showing people that this is these are the numbers and this is the history of what we had and and here's some places where I think we can improve. Um, but I feel like now I'm it, it's such a wonderful part of the conversation and and we've sort of included it into our filmmaking. Um, you know, we now have this information available at at every milestone as we're making our films. And I, I think it's done such a huge thing to improve um, just the, the representation that we have in our, in our films. And I think for me personally, it's it's now I'm not, I don't have the barrier of like, okay, I'm a little afraid of showing this information. It's um, it's kind of expected. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's been a really exciting change that, I, that I've seen sort of those conversations happening on, on all levels and in all projects. Um, still always, Still always room to to grow and i think um you know Therese, i love that what you said about um decolonizing your thinking because i do think that that's uh, that's a big piece of it and and for me sort of showing um moving from this idea of like a single character that is going to be representative of all you know there may be one african-american character in a in a film and and you have to be very very careful of how you how that is shown but now you know, we're able to sort of have a much broader spectrum of representation. And so um, I think it's going to allow for a lot more interesting storytelling. And that's with gender, race, um, sexual orientation. I mean, I think it's, uh, there's a lot of evolution happening. So, I'd love to ask you both, to what extent do you think this is being shaped by diverse management structures at studios? Has that changed in the last decade? Is that changing? Is that influencing the fact that, Sharice, you've managed to have this amazing success with Encanto? Will that open the door for more? Sharice, maybe I can ask, start with you. I certainly hope so. And, uh, you know, I've seen just uh, in a short time, uh, there'd be a lot of change in terms of studio leadership, I think. Jennifer Lee has done an incredible job at Disney Animations, uh, just uh, in terms of hiring more people of color, more women into leadership roles. I know there's a lot of movies that are coming out or sort of in the pipeline right now that, that are, uh, I think, going to be representative of that change. And uh, also just in other work that I've done, I've seen more studio executives that are women, uh, more studio executives that are people of color. And I think the people that are in the position to green light projects and Mm. higher creatives are uh that's that's a really powerful position to be in in terms of creating change because storytellers can uh make stories as diverse and inclusive as possible but if we don't get hired to do it then uh, they're not going to get very far 
does it help having the success that you've had with Encanto, Charisse? Does that mean you're able to open the door to other people who may be struggling to get an in? Absolutely, yes. And and all, I mean, all of the projects that I'm working on right now, I've got some projects, some series projects, and also some feature projects coming up. It's at the forefront of my mind to hire people of color as actors, hire people mm -hmm. of color behind the camera. It's uh, I feel it's a big responsibility of mine to actually um, sort of uh, change the makeup, not just of what we see on screen, but of the people behind the screen and the people who are making the stories as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jessica, your thoughts on that question as well? Yeah, we have um, at Pixar, we have uh, what's we have a basically a, a constantly changing group of people um, that are sort of responsible for helping to steer a project into the green, you know, into out of development and, and into production. And so mm -hmm. um, they I know they try really hard to make sure that that's racially diverse, it's gender diverse, it's age, age diversity and sort of, um, you know, ultimately, we have Pete Doctor and Jim Morris, who are the heads of the studio, who are, you know, going to be making the final decisions. But I think they really rely on this, this what we call our creative approval team, um, to give them input and sort of help them uh, figure out which projects are are working and, and are able to move forward. So, um, and that is, you know, that's been a constantly evolving group, and it's been exciting to see that input into the films. Um, yeah, I agree with I agree with Therese. I think the more that that we can be seeing um, women and people of color and and different orientations in those um, in in those green light positions and and in key creative positions. I think the more interesting our stories are going to be, and the more representative they'll be. And if there was one thing that you could both change within your industry to Im improve inclusion and diversity and giving people opportunity, I bet it's quite hard to pin it down to one. But if you could change one big factor. What would that be? Sorry, I'm putting you both on the spot here. Jessica, maybe I could ask you. First. Oh. <laughs> I think um, I don't. Um, one big thing. I mean, I, I think I would just love to see the the continuation of um, uh, of a, a certain amount of risk taking. I know that it's um, you know obviously we're we're making movies and it's a business and 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 all of that. But I I would. I would love to see us be a little bit more representative of the of the world that we have, and and you know specifically pushing into you know maybe some LB, LGBTQ representation that I don't think has been as present. Um, you know, gender. Uh, I I think we've been making some really good progress um, on those fronts, and I, I think we're starting to see stories that are that are uh, pushing into really interesting racial and as, as Sharice was saying, sort of those mixed racial households, um, which. Mm -hmm. children today are going to be growing up with and expecting. Um, I think, uh, yeah, sexual orientation might be a, a place where I would love to see a little bit more work done. And Interesting. Cherise? Sure. I, I mean, I think there's so many <laughs> things that can be done that people much smarter and, than I uh, are probably figuring out as we speak. But I, I think for me, probably what I see is maybe the biggest uh, barrier to entry is, you know, sort of like any other profession, you kind of get opportunities based on the opportunities that you've had and you get the opportunity mm -hmm. that you've had based on who wants to hire you and, and who feels like simpatico with you on like some kind of baseline level. level. So I think just, uh, like I said, more people, more like female showrunners, more people of color who are showrunners, more women who are directing, um, I think, all of that, people in key creative positions uh, would really be able to help kind of change the tide of how things are uh, sort of as they stand. And I, re I read a, an interview that you did, Cherise, where you were thinking about what would you write? And then you thought, I would like to write something that my daughter would like to see that yes. would appeal to her. <laughs> um, what stories do you think are still really interesting that need to be told? Oh my goodness, there's so many. Um, I, I feel, uh, you know, something that I'm really interested in in some of the next projects that I'm take, taking on and tackling are, I think a lot of times because there are so many, there's so fewer stories about people of color that sort of were, uh, the stories are either kind of stories of trauma and, and kind of having to 
overcome something difficult, or they are stories of, of where about exceptionalism, someone who has managed to overcome and succeed despite all the odds. And those are stories that are definitely a part of our community and need to be told. But I'm actually trying to focus on kind of uh, normal people. I, I'm working on a comedy <laughs> about two kind of best friends who are kind of screwballs who are one is Cuban and one is Dominican and they're just kind of it's a coming of age story and we're just they're just sort of normal kind of ridiculous flawed people you know I'm, I'm working on a story uh that's that it's about it's a comedy about a mom in Brooklyn and she just so happens to be uh Latinx you know so I'm I think that uh kind of diversifying the uh, spectrum of storytelling that uh and the stories that we kind of accept and are allowed to um produce and, and have greenlit about people of color, I think, is the next frontier in my mind. And do those stories become an easier pitch when, you know, successes like Encanto have, lay, have paved the way? Uh, for me, yes. And I hope that the success of Encanto uh, can be sort of unequivocal enough at this point <laughs> that uh, other people who are pitching stories, other people who are trying to kind of uh, get different kinds of stories on screen can point to this movie and say, hey, this movie did really well. It became a global phenomenon. And it was about a, a Colombian family and it was really rooted in that culture. So let's have these culturally specific stories out in the world. They are not just gratifying uh, as stories, but they are also good business. So um, I really hope that Canto can uh, kind of change the dialogue for sort of projects that people are trying to green light go, going forward. Mm, absolutely. And and Jessica, Turning Red, which is, I mean, due to be released here shortly, uh, I was reading that that has an all-female creative leadership team. That's the first in Pixar history. That seems insane that that's the first year in 2022. I mean, I commend it, but it still seems insane. Yeah, we're, um, we're very proud of that movie. I personally love this movie so much. It's one of my favorites. I think, you know, to to what Sharice was just saying, it's the it's the story, I mean, of a of just a 13-year-old girl and she is so unapologetic about who she is and she doesn't she doesn't have imposter syndrome and she's not, I mean, she turns into a giant red panda, which I guess is exceptional, <laughs> but but mostly the story is just about her and her friends and, and the coming of age and, and her relationship with her mother in particular, which I think is a story that um, doesn't get told in the complicated way that, you know, that, it, that coming from a female perspective, um, we can see. Um, so yeah, I, I'm really hoping that this, uh, this story is one that people are gonna feel as universal uh, as I do, because um, yeah, it's so fun. It looks excellent. My daughter's desperate to see that. So maybe yours too, Sharice, will drag you to the cinema to see that one. But I am but, very, very excited to see that movie. <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Such a pleasure to talk to you. Can't wait to see more of your work in the future and uh, keep doing all your amazing work. Thank you very much.